Before we begin, I just want to clarify a few things. Uh, this should have been a panel discussion of three. I should have been the moderator. However, last minute we had a constellation, and so we're having a conversation, a conversation between Mr. Bakiri, myself, and you, the audience. Because what we are talking about today is about finding solutions to the problems and also building good relationships. As you know, we are talking about connecting and reconnecting. But before we go into business, I just want to say that since 2020, Think Africa had been on the board of Ethno, the Ethnic Relationship Advisory Board of Southern Finland. And we will be there until 2024. Now, what it entails is that Ethno monitors the situation of immigrants in Finland, their participation, their contribution to society, and how they relate to the host society. And so, I myself, as an immigrant who moved to Finland in, 1990, in the early 90s, 1991 from Moscow, and Mr. Bikiri, who happens to be also in the same time period, moved to Finland from Kosovo. So it's been very interesting to see. We're going to look at this from two, three strands. One is relationship in the past, and then relationship now, and how relationship will look like in the future. So I just tell that Mr. Bikiri has been involved from the very time on with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Minister of Justice, the Minister of Interior, and the Minister of Labor. He's worked on many integration projects, building relationship. He currently acts as a coordinator at the Minister of uh, the Minister of the Center for Expertise on building good relationships. So he's an expert. However, we're gonna now dive into the talk. But if you, it's on. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. If you just let me first, thank you for giving me an opportunity to be part of this conversation, and this uh, very important event. And uh, is this mic working? Because I don't feel that. Okay. Yeah. And thank you also for introducing me. And uh, it has been a p pleasure collaborating with you, doing this work together now uh, for over a month. Uh, and I am very glad that uh, Think Africa NGO is now uh, a member of uh, Ethno Board, Southern Ethno Board. And that's right, uh, I moved to Finland from at the 90, beginning of the 1990s, and we have already, by when we discussed of this uh, panel discussion, we just summarize a bit this issue, but uh, I'm very happy to be able to give some thoughts about this topic. But very should we start now? Yes, let's do. So, um, you are from Kosovo. Yes. Originally, and I'm from Liberia, two diverse countries. And we both came to Finland in the early 90s, at the peak of a serious migration influx in Finland. But migration or integration or sort of uh, immigrants coming to Finland was the new dead. But when, and we, we, we talk on the boat when we went to Tallinn for the integration conference in, in Estonia. We remember that the topic of building good relationship in society should have been then in 1991. That's when there was a serious conflict between different ethnic groups in Finland, up north, River Niemi, Mikkeli. There were a lot of clashes, cultural clashes, and you live at that time. Now, when you look back, because we're looking at this thing from three angles, the past, the present, and the future, how would you say, and this is a question for all you to also think about, what would you say, and we cannot speak about the past for those who came in 2019 or 2020 or 2015, so it's a bit com contextual. So we need to look at it from the past point of how we stand. But when you look at it from that point and now, how would you say the relationship has been with immigration or immigrants? I want to clarify, we're not talking about racism. We're not talking about uh, uh, discrimination. We're not talking about uh, sideline. We're talking about how we can build a relationship that will sustain our contribution to society. So we're not your vent. Let's look at the solution. But you cannot find a solution if you don't look at the past. So plenty for the future by learning from the past, but focusing exclusively on your present is what we're trying to look at. 
So how would you clarify? How would you classify relationship with Finland with immigration immigrants at the moment? Then now. Well, uh, 20 years ago in Finland, there are there were uh, very much less immigrants here, and uh, mainly at the, in, at the beginning of 1990s, we were just target groups. Uh, we and we were living in different parts of Finland. Uh, and as you said, in that time, we both agree that uh, all kind of uh, racism and um, hate uh, was very present in that time for different kind of uh, people who moved from Finland from different states, not only uh, conflicts, not only based on uh, skin color, but also in other, other bases, religion, uh, language, and so, so on. But in that time, there uh, we were just target groups uh, and now we we are actors uh, in many uh, immigrant uh, communities you have uh, ngos who, who are very powerful uh, for example as this I think africa organizations but you have hundreds of other uh, ngos nowadays and uh, this is very important when we think uh, of uh, how to build good relations between uh, different population groups because you have to have uh, actors by which you can create a good relations because uh, if you just uh, think that uh, people uh, letting people being segregated as in my opinion nowadays the biggest problem what comes to creating good relations between different population groups is the segregation segregation uh, we are very much, too, too much doing things uh, just Sorry. with inside of our small group. Right. And it was also very interesting to hear uh, our foreign minister, Pekka, how his speech, he, I like his thoughts and everything, but he says, but uh, uh, using diaspora identity, diaspora identity in this uh, Think Africa, uh, event it made just me thinking one th one thing that uh, how good how good does this diasporic identity to us how good it is for us when we consider think of integration in this society thank you very much uh, for the audience i like to throw a question to you many of you must have come not in the 90s like we and uh, when you look back at, in terms of relationship building, I mean, you spend 80% of your time at work and 20% of your time with your people or your family. What would you, anyone, would you say that in terms of relationship, building good relationship, how are you connected with your local host society? How much connection do you have with the Finnish uh, uh, friends, workmates, or within your environment. How much connection do we have with them? I mean, personally, and uh, you can then pick up the mark and just chip into this. Hello. Take off your mask. <laughs> Hello. It should be on. It should be automatic. Techniques, guys. Okay, music. to a song that they're singing or an art piece of art that they're presenting. Many other places have been difficult to relate to, <laughs> but music and art have not. That's a, been a great way to build relationships for me personally. Great, thank you, Art. Any other contribution from the audience on the question of how do you, how have you built, or how is the relationship with the local host sort of what is the status of that at the moment, and how do you feel? What could be improved in that direction? Because one of the things we mentioned is that we've we've been in our own silos, 
of say Igbo or Liberian or Kenyans, and we don't connect to the whole society. But we cannot build good relationship if we are not proactive in our engagement. We are not proactive in our involvement. And he mentioned, Mr. Big Hita mentioned, we have to be actors, players in the field. We need to educate also our local host. So if there's any comment, so we'll move on. Yep. Say I moved here about um, almost 10 years ago, but I worked in a Finnish company before already in Germany. And uh, at least I have built my connections already all over all those years and kept them. So I think that is at least kind of, you know, just keeping, remembering and really keeping the connections you have built over time. Right. So you're talking about professional networks, professional connections. Yes. We we yeah, that's a good point. But we, when we, when we that's one aspect of building good relationship. But however, culturally speaking, we need to also engage our local community. If you live in East of Helsinki or Espo, like, like I do, we don't have any immigrant community that meets with the Finnish community there. So I think through ethno we're able to do this thing, but how, how many for example, Rami, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know you 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 knew, so I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm sorry about that. Think about building relationship in that sense from a newcomer right now and with epidemic and looking for future next year in two years' time. How much connection do you have with the local and how can that help build or foster your professional development or growth? Oh, connections. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kuku. But um, connecting with local people has been always a difficult task here. But... Uh, Fortunately, there are good organizations uh, which help you do that. Uh, let's take an example of Think Africa. So we still have events which is going, which help you to connect, reconnecting. So these are some organizations which help you in these ways. But otherwise, it's very difficult connecting in this society here. We talk about connecting and reconnecting, but in, in presence or in reality, it is very difficult. Very good. I'm going to put you on the spot. You're an expert in building relationships. And uh, you just heard a dilemma, the difficulties, the cold, the, the coldness of breaking through the ice. In your work with the Koto project, yeah. you travel a lot, extensively across the country, meeting government officials, municipal representatives, NGOs, NGOs political parties, yeah. on the essence and importance of tapping into immigrant talent. How would you say that difficulty has been? How, was it, how difficult was it for you to get the message across to them that we can have Ethno, for example, now having immigrant organizations walk into that? So how long it took to get to where we are? If you look back in the 90s when there was stuff and how you got involved into integrating of telling about good relationship, of course, out of the chaos. So what, what have been the, some of the challenges? Yeah. As we, yeah, we have need we need uh, I have worked in this anti-discrimination and integration issues as you told earlier in the last 20 years so I have been able to be part of this work and very, I am very glad of that we have we have need to train a lot of authorities in public sector first of all uh, officials that uh, face immigrant persons in their work. Uh, we have done that very much and we have empowered NGOs also. We have, uh, in during these 20 years, we have helped people to create an NGO, an organization, association, because this is also one very important thing for immigrants to, to know that in Finland, the state structure, structure is like that, that uh, public authorities they discuss with NGOs is very difficult uh, for an indiv individ individual. individual to get his or her uh, point of view to the authorities and to the decision makers so that's why being part of some organization is the way to have an impact and this ethnic relations negotiating uh, negotiating board ethno is the best one of the best uh, mechanisms like the tool yes, yes. 
that we have created. We have seven regional ethnic relations negotiating boards Board, in, yeah. Finland. in Finland. Yeah. You are, I think Africa is part of Parliament, Southern. Yeah? Saudi one, yes. yeah. And this is what we have uh, had to do. But as I said, uh, now I see this as a very good potential. Uh, now we have potential because we have actors. We have actors. We have NGOs who represent very a large amount of people, uh, and uh, also people who are in a big risk of facing racism and uh, being discriminated. Well, let's let's go through that issue. I'm thinking about one thing that if you say. You had a comment to make, yeah? No, no. Because if you think about, I believe what you say is right, getting the NGOs involved or being a member of an NGO, like we are part of Think Africa. But one of the things we do in Think Africa is also the issue of representation. Political representation, for example, and making a contribution. Because when you say decision makers, are uh, probably hard for me to tell them or for Rania to say her problem. But as an organization, we can sign a petition for some changes. However, when the laws are made, you would think that the immigrant population of society, how much do we have political representation in the parliament, for example, or in the political parties, for example? And if you think about this last uh, municipal election, which kind of a witness saw the highest number of immigrant background uh, candidates, you would think that out of the 54,000 African immigrants in, fin in Finland at the moment, and we have how many parliamentarians in parliament, the, the, the numbers just don't match. So how can we, as actors in non-governmental associations, influence the political decision making? Because those laws should reflect the needs of our group as immigrants. Yes, and you mentioned also very important uh, concept, concept of representation. And uh, representation, in my opinion, is also a good indicator. If you look through representation in media, representation in uh, uh, decision-making, representation in public authorities, you can see in Finland, and you can feel also that they are quite homogenic. True, true, uh, true. So we must be more in much better way and better amount also represented in you all of this. Heterogeneous representation. Yes, yeah. yes. But uh, elections are a very important tool. People should vote more. In all immigrant uh, communities should vote more. And we, have, we must have also more candidates for parliament candidates, for assemblies in municipalities. And now the situation is get improving all the time. But let me just, uh, Kuku, is, if it is possible, sure, this explain is, this, this conversation. good relations concept. Because I think we don't have yet more enough knowledge what this means. Because it is quite a new theory here in Finland, at least. In Great Britain, this theory was developed uh, over 20 years ago. But in Finland, we have had this just for last 10 years. And the uh, majority of actors, uh, different kind of stakeholders uh, all uh, over Finland, they are not familiar. And that's why I just want to tell here uh, that <laughs> also that good. It's, uh, good relations are uh, based on uh, four... Uh, also all the way. Four, four areas. Four areas. Attitudes, uh, sense of uh, safety, security, yeah. interaction, and uh, participation, the fourth one. And all these bases, you cannot separate one from yeah. others. These all four always go together. And by raising this knowledge that on what, uh, what is question when we talk about good relations, or got a relation between different population groups, actors can uh, know better, sorry of my English, but actors can know better in what part to concentrate, but also by taking into 
into consideration the other bases. For example, if one thinks that we should improve uh, attitudes, we have too much may, uh, stereotype thinking, we have too much prejudice, we have no trust, we feel that uh, our groups we represent in NGO, they don't trust decision makers, how we can improve this trust by uh, the way can be participation, to improve participation, to, yeah. to get people into interaction. Let me throw a question, very good explanation. Nice, thanks for the enlightenment about good relationships, 20 years in England. Now, when we talk about good relationships, I want to ask the audience, what is, if from the fall, there was attitude, sense of, sense of security, yeah. participation, Interaction. And interaction. And the interaction comes to the question I asked earlier as to how much do we play in our local environment. So, question to the audience. I want it to be a three-way conversation. Anyone can pick up the microphone and tell me. What is the level of interaction at the moment between you and your, the whole society? And how do you see this interaction? I think this mic is too low. Uh, improving in the next five years, let's just be short term, in the next five years. Anyone, please, what is the level of interaction with the whole society and how do you see this progressing in the future of five years time? You have difficult questions, Kuku. It's on purpose. If, 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 if we are connecting and reconnecting. Now, people will, let me just add to this. Before COVID, we were disconnected. So COVID is not the culprit over here. So don't want you to cooperate, yeah? Before COVID, we were disconnected. COVID even amplified the disconnection, right? Now, post-COVID, whenever that will be, what would be the level of our connectedness or disconnectedness? And how would it change? And that's why I say the future, the past, the present, and the future. So when I started off, it was on purpose to make us start thinking of solutions, solution orientation. We cannot say it's all bad. What is our role in making bad good? And that's why I throw the question to you guys. But just to help uh, on getting an uh, answer, I would add a question which uh, can uh, complete this. <laughs> your well, we question. You. Uh, if we want to have interaction, we, want, we must have opportunities to participate. Opportunities to, I agree. to participate. And, uh, to, and when we participate, we are interacting. Uh, so, is there enough? I would add this question. Is there enough enough places? room for participation? Yeah. Yes, enough. Uh, that's that's important because we in Think Africa we have this thing called this the the, Afri the Think Africa Democracy Action Team, and we are taking part in democratic empowerment, participation, voting, and stuff. And we had a thing running between June, uh, between April and June, called I Vote. One of our former board members was running that. And we had many people voting this year. However, if you look at the representation so far, it still don't compete. But we still need to do more. So how much opportunity do you have to participate that you can have an impact and influence to make the change of building good relationship that we're talking about? So back to you. Thanks for helping the audience. I'll just speak until someone else. <laughs> Please do. Um, I think education is always the best way to engage with people. But um, also politics can be very tedious and boring. <laughs> so uh, the opportunity to participate. Um, I've been here one year, so I'm just literally talking for the sake of it. <laughs> I think the opportunity to participate has to be linked to um, a vested interest in w the outcome. If I participate and nothing's going to change, then why am I participating? But if I participate and I can see the change that I, my participation leads to a change, I feel or my uh, sense is that most people feel even if they participate, nothing's going to change. So if people are educated and people are aware of what impact their participation will have, maybe that will change how the participation is perceived. 
That's, that's a good point. Okay, well, let me just add to that. Does this concept... Yeah, somebody in the back there have a... Oh. As we go on, as you talk, <laughs> I just want to ask, does this concept of participation, is it improved by thinking of the African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Does that make any sense to exploit the participation aspect in this, what Ondi just said? So, Sophie, please... Yeah, I want to say something. Uh, when I was um, uh, interviewing for the iBoat series, um, it was uh, funded by Moni Heli and Think Africa, and it was that was that money came from the Ministry of Justice, and I felt that uh, it's only when there's a uh, voting, like when it's about to happen, that people care about it, and uh, there was money given from the Ministry of Just from the Ministry of Justice to different communities to mobilize uh, the people. But the thing is, after that, it was finished, and then nobody talks about it. So this already tells you that um, if you really care. It shouldn't be when it's about to come. It should be throughout the year. Proactivity. Yes, uh, but not only that, but I also think that uh, voting is not only about going there, walking, and just writing something. Uh, if people don't feel that they belong, they're not going because they think this is invisible. What, what, in, what outcome is it going to have? Because I can tell you that it's the, although we mobilized and we did so much work this year, it was still the same percentage of African participants, which tells you that we have failed. There's this, 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 this trust. Yes, a trust question. You want to add something? Uh, thank you, Sylvia. But you two, you have raised also <laughs> two very different, uh, important, extremely important uh, concepts, points. Yeah, this sense of belonging is very important when we consider, <laughs> think of integration. If you don't, if a person don't feel, doesn't feel belonging here, you can, be, feel, yeah, feel, you can be at work, you can be of. very highly educated, but if you don't belong, feel belonging here, it's... Uh, you cannot then exploit. Not, yeah, then uh, in that occasion, it's not a question of integration. But uh, when you talk, and art, you mentioned also art. art. All kind of uh, doing which can bring people together. Activities. Activities. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, important for creating good relations between between people but uh, as you described your uh, experience until now uh, in my opinion uh, participation must have an as part of participation should be uh, opportunity to impact true why could I miss models yeah impact if you don't feel that if you don't feel that then there has been a problem in interaction, problem in sense of security, and problem in attitudes. Very true, very true. How can we then holistically combine attitude, uh, uh, what was the attitude, security, interaction, and uh, the, the participation? How can we just connect them together so that we can get the, the, the results that we need to get, the good relationship that will build the trust, that would make Finland a sort of a secure, immigrant-friendly society. Because what I understand from the audience and from what you say, and from what I also have experienced, is that security is not at its highest level. And trust is also a problem for participation. Elvis has, uh, Everest, you have a point you want to make. Uh, sorry, sir. Oh, sorry, sir. Okay. Please. Max, that's you. Now I recognize you. The, 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 the Max was hiding you. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Kuku. And your uh, next part. I think the thing here is that uh, I was trying to answer a previous question you asked, but then I think I can connect all of them together. Please do. You see, uh, from my own perspective, you know, I always uh, emphasize this. Um, I came here as a student, did everything in English. So uh, you see how challenging it is for me to learn Finnish language. It's really, really a big challenge. And uh, in a country where the language is, uh, the local language is very dominant, uh, the, the chances are not that many. You don't have so much chance in terms of connecting. And uh, 
building that relationship again is not that easy because uh, if you cannot speak somebody's language, the issue of trust you mentioned, it's difficult to trust you when you don't speak the same language with me. If I don't understand you, you don't understand me. So because there must be a dyadic conversation. And um, coming to the politics, I just wanted to point out something. I remember about this time last year, I had a meeting with a member of the parliament here by name Elena Vartonen. And we are talking about uh, this uh, kokomus, which I didn't even know the meaning uh, then. And then but we had a dis this discussion and then I was able to, I told her, because she was emphasizing on uh, foreigners participating in Finnish politics and uh, I tried to let her understand that it is really difficult. To be frank with you, it was this year that I voted for the first time because I never knew what it meant. I didn't know it was such as, uh, an easy process. It's basically voters education basically. Yeah. Sort of a, you like Vic voters education? In yeah, sense. yeah, yeah, it was nice. So uh, the thing is, when I was discussing with her and she was emphasizing on this, the, the need for foreigners to be more active in uh, 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 politics in Finland, I pointed out something to her that it is really difficult for someone who came here not understanding Finnish language to you know, participate in the Finnish elections where the campaigns are held in Finnish language. Everything about the election is, even if you attend any of their meetings, because I'm lucky to live close to where they have some meetings in East Omena, everything is totally in Finnish. So somehow I'm excluded already without being told. So after my discussion with her, we, uh, she, we came to an agreement that we should try something which I would also like to advertise here, what they now call the International Kokomus. It is something that is coming up now. And That's new? Yeah, it's International Kokomus, and the, the, it is, the target is the uh, foreign, foreigners here that speak English. You know, so that is a way forward. So what I'm trying to say, why the foreigners themselves who are living in Finland are trying as much as they can to f f belong to the society. I think it will also uh, benefit everyone if the Finnish authorities come a bit, come down a bit, because it is a, a two-way thing. We have come, we have a come. Two-way street, yeah. Yeah, we have come, we have come. They can also think of possible ways of, you know, thinking of a strategy to embrace these people that speak Finnish, speak, uh, that non-Finnish speakers, because they have come and gradually with time, they will definitely learn the Finnish language. Thank, Thank you, you for you. taking so much Thank time. Thank you very much. Everest had a comment to make. I think we still have time. Are we hungry? We have time. Okay. We do have yeah. time. Okay. Very important information. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, if we are trying to look for ways on how people can uh, participate I don't think that way starts from a political position because all of us here, we have a diverse background. Your participation, my participation starts from where my profession is. For example, if I'm an IT engineer, I cannot be expected to come and participate or show my participation through political avenue. I need an IT avenue where I can show where I, what I can do, in what way I can uh, contribute to the society, and in one way or the other, impart other people. And then my fellow Africans who will see me putting an impact through that profession will feel that, yes, I can also participate and you know, let my impact be you know, known. But if we start to drag people to a particular direction that this is a place where you can now start to participate, or when you have achieved a certain um, orientation or a certain level of uh, criteria before you can start to participate, it means that people with impact, people with uh, talent and skill are left behind because you are not regarded at the moment you come to Finland that you have something that you can do. You are not regarded that you have a, a skill that can benefit the society. You are only regarded until you meet the criteria of uh, excellent Finnish language and until somebody feels that, okay, let's draft you in in a more like a way to fulfill the diversity requirement, then you cannot participate. Such a way of uh, a kind of like looking at participation, I think for me, it's a very wrong approach. Every person that I see here, I believe that they have something that they can bring to this society and in their own various way, 
participate. So in other words, you're saying you can do be like the good hair day person. Yeah, everybody, that's, that's, yes, everybody can something, participate something, something in different ways. ways. Let's and not participate in one single way, like uh, look at it from one single angle. But that's why that's why he said that the four areas has to be interconnected. You cannot separate them. Yeah, but the problem is that the participation when we want to talk about, for instance, for example, integration issues, there are a kind of agencies that think that they have the idea on how to usher and implement it without actually understanding the people who needs to be integrated. In this society, and I must say it, that in this society, a lot of the immigrant community don't feel accommodated in this society. So when you are busy drafting your own, uh, what do you call, uh, integration paper. policies, they don't feel any of that that you're doing because they don't feel welcome in this country. Right, thank you very that's, much. That's uh, the point. He wanted to add to the, to the comment because hold on a second. It's before very, you go on. very important what this friend said now that uh, participating just by voting is not the only way of participating. Job is very important uh, way to, to participate. But we do know that, as you said, that um, most of immigrants they have uh, difficulties of getting a job. We have discrimination in uh, job markets. Uh, in recruitment, in recruitment, yeah, in recruitment, recruitment yeah. yeah, we have discrimination there, and we try as a state to tackle that. We do this uh, in promoting good relations. Concept can be used also in the in employment job in, place in, 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 in the market. market, yeah. And but yeah, that's the that's the that point. Yeah, just we just inform that why why we have met and what yeah. we are going to do. In the future, together, because for first time in Finland we have uh, the government action plan for combating racism and promoting good relations between uh, different population group for first time, and this uh, program was launched just uh, less than a month ago, and I will be as one of the coordinators for at the moment I'm the only coordinator. And I am placed in the ELU Center, but we we have very good resource now that together with ethnos, regional ethnos, next year, for example, here in southern Southern part, yeah. <laughs> part of Finland, together with Think Africa, Iraq United and New Hidistus. And the many other associations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are seven or Monica. eight. Yeah. Monica, yeah. associations which are member of ETHNO, we will organize together different kind of uh, events, different kind of things by which we can, we will think together uh, how to develop, develop, how to improve relations. relations. Very good point. Uh, you had a point, uh, Ramya. Yeah, yeah. Um, integration, uh, as he was telling, there are a lot of policies that we start, like, at least for an immigrant like me, a year ago, the first thing that we do is integration towards the office. But unfortunately, the fact is that the integration start with Finnish course. There are quite good other courses that TE offers support, but over a period of time, we get to know from other people who have done it, but not through TE office. So it starts there, you know, uh, when you're trying to integrate yourself to the society, it, it is appreciated that they give you a chance to learn the language, but is that your first priority for an integration? So in other words, you're saying a lack of sufficient information. Lack the, of the, sufficient the, the, information the, the, and the, the integration starts yeah. uh, with a finished course. If, uh, is selective. that a way forward? Yeah, so what you're saying, you, you have to have finished language plus a professional development uh, strand. Yeah, I think so you it, it should them. happen go, you know, yeah, both hand ways. in hand. Then you feel, okay, you have such a lot of experience that you come from. Yeah. Okay. At least for me, I was handling project management 12 years in seven different countries. But the unfortunate part that I could hear in the integration part is you will have to learn Finnish to do anything. Yeah. Now, that's where we should start because the first thing that you hear as a start of your integration is you have to learn my language to be integrated in the society. I just have to add to that for where I work with the city of Kerala in the career development. We have the center of expertise and skills development for immigrants. However, in three years' time, when you come to Finland, you have the integration period. It's a window. 
you learn the language, you get some skills development. But after three years, there have been people from my, in my current state, people who have not integrated properly. They haven't had jobs, they haven't had proper language proficiency. And so what we're doing now is to remap the skills, re-engineer their import, and see how we can then, with companies, arrange sort of a, a connection that they go to the, to the companies to work and learn language on the work, rather than just sitting in the classroom and learning. As you said, you got experience from project management from this long, and you wouldn't want to go sit and learn this language. You need to put that skills to use with a company as you learn the language. So that's something we should look at in the future, how we build relationship because work is important. Yep. Thank you, Ramya. We got I, five more minutes and then we're off. I would also suggest um, integrating things that, uh, like, I don't remember his name. Everest. He was saying that don't require, that is not so serious, but is also very serious. Art, music, yeah. um, I don't know, storytelling. And mm, if you have different organizations, like a Finnish ballet company and an Afro... Afro, I don't know. Afro dance. Afro so dance. And if the two thingies come together, you achieve integration without having a sign saying integration where it happens naturally and people feel, and it doesn't require language because you're moving involved, with your body. Yeah. And if it's music, you're sharing music. If it's food, you're sharing food. If it's um, IT skills, you're sharing different things like that. If people are building a game or if people are doing things that are not so very straightforward but require people to integrate then i think that's another way yes one more from the audience there's a lady there who wants to say something and then we we'll wrap up uh, just for the lady, we also have uh, online audience oh okay yeah, and uh, we have uh, some very uh, a question here or a comment so to say uh, from frank oj who says that systematic design problems are deeply rooted and take generations to fix uh, relations are created with people that are interested in um and also, and also relating with others. How does the government prepare the society holistically to connect with immigrants? That's a question from uh, an, only, an online audience. I think that's a, good, that's a good point because that's actually hasn't been addressed. And that's what I, what I understand is the program in action that is for next year, tackling discrimination and, 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 and what was it? Promoting, Promoting good relations will be the one that will probably tackle what he's asking. But the good question, thank you, Frank. Oh, somebody. Yes. Um, there was a lady over there. Okay, do we have time? Yeah, that's the last question from the audience, and then we wrap up from this side. Unfortunately, some people are hungry. Sorry about that. Did you have a question? <laughs> that was too abrupt, yeah? Sorry about that. I've got to be very frank. Yes, please. Okay, um, thank you. Um, um, fortunately, on, uh, and unfortunately for me, we're talking about Finland. I'm coming from Tallinn. So, uh, yes, and... Um, I'm um, actually uh, just two months. I had a mindset before I came. I've met that part of it, and I've also found some very wonderful person. But my question is, um, someone once told me, and I know it's true, it's difficult to um, amend a man, but it's easier to train a child. Now, I had um, an experience. I was in a bus. Um, uh, an average uh, seven, eight-year-old girl was sitting and um, I made an attempt to sit beside her. She stood up. Definitely um, an Estonian or Russian, I don't know. And now I have kids. And I was going to work early morning, and um, a girl I met at the bus stop says, Auntie, do you have children? I said, yes. She said, don't bring them to Estonia. I said, why? She said, because my teacher teaches only Estonians. Now, the question is, we are talking about discrimination. We are talking about, it's, usual, it's easier for we adults to talk about it and try to shield ourselves from the shock of it. But how do I, as a mother of two, five and three, shield my children from that? How do I explain to my five years um, inquisitive son that um, someone whose color is not the same as mine can't sit beside him? So I think if these things are taken down to the roots, that's the attitude. would yeah, the attempt attitude, to fix it. Yeah, very good point. And that's, as a parent, that's very impressive. I mean, my, my kids will tell me that, Daddy, I'm Kenyan, I'm Liberian, and I'm Finnish. Why are you a mommy, only Liberian and Finnish, uh, Kenyan? And so it's about how we can break this down to the attitude. And he mentioned that. And actually, there's a lot to be done. This, this conversation could have gone on for weeks. Unfortunately, we need to wrap it up, but we can talk about it at dinner or at lunch because it's very interesting. Building relationships starts from 
This is charity begins at home, right? Someone mentioned it. You train up a child, you know, when they grow, they wouldn't depart. The attitude, how you embark into them, that why did he move? Why did she move? And to tell my kid, it's hard. Certain information they can, they can channel, certain they cannot. At what point do you break it to them? So it's very important. You want to say a few last words before we end up this thing, so that based on the questions, based on the concerns, and the future that we have planned for with Elu, how do we go forward to the future and building good relationship? Because that is your expertise. Now, I don't want to be, I, I, I try to be very short. I just want to thank you for giving me <laughs> this opportunity and encourage us all to be in more interact with each other. Uh, the more interacted we are, the more connected we are, it doesn't say that there will, would, would not be a problem sometimes or conflicts, but through conflicts also we can learn and we can raise understanding between each other. So thank you, thank you very much. Great words of wisdom, I like that. <laughs> thank you so much for you both for this uh, 